Good afternoon. As a medical physicist, at some moment, I also became an artist, an X-ray artist. And I like, like to tell how that happened. In 1895, Röntgen discovered a new kind of radiation. He called it X-rays. And the difference between these X-rays and visible light becomes clear when it hits an object. In the visible light, we only see the outer, the surface of the object. With X-rays and in color. With X-rays, we see the inner, in grayscale. I myself, I specialized in X-rays in the hospital. And with X-rays, we can look into the body because the, uh, because of the difference between the, uh, the difference in density between all kinds of types of tissues. One day, a colleague of me, uh, of mine, asked me to make an X-ray of one of his art paintings. It's a very thin object. I never did it before, but let's try. And it worked. Here below, where it is, you see that X-ray, and the paint is well visible. That's because these old paints contain a lot of heavy metals. And then I thought, let's try to make an X-ray of an even thinner object, for example, flowers. And I started with a bouquet of tulips. All the same material. No difference in density, no heavy metals, only difference in thickness. But I got my X-ray. And it is an analog image. It's a silver bromide X-ray film. So it was digitized, and in the computer, I inverted it, I selected some areas, and I colored them. And then some people told me, that's art. And I became <laughs> an artist. I liked these, uh, these images. I made a lot of them. But I missed something. I missed the animals. Flowers need animals like animals need flowers. So I bought some insects, and I positioned the insects around my flowers. And also, as you see, the insects were imaged. And that's because the absorption of the radiation in the wing of the butterfly is about the same as the attenuation, the absorption of the radiation in the leaf of the flower, and so on. And then I thought, let's make a next step. Let's try to make X-ray images of complete natural scenes with larger animals. But where do I get my larger animals? I started with a visit at, at the taxidermist and bought one of his birds. But when I made the X-ray, it was disappointing. <laughs> There was a lot of iron thread in it. And that is because the taxidermist uses only the skin of the bird to make these kind of preparations. So I couldn't use them in my X-ray images. Where do I find my large animals? Along the road. A lot of traffic victims. <laughs> Or a friend that collects reptiles. Sometimes they die and I can use them. Or the cat, something catches, sometimes catches some animals and can, I can use them. I sampled a lot of animals that I can use in my X-ray images. Now, how it works. I take a number of plants with flowers. I take a couple of animals, lizards. I put them all together in one posi uh, composition. The X-ray tube on one side, X-ray film on the other side, and I get my X-ray. And I think it looks real nice. We can see that lizard very well, but also we can see the leaves of the flower. And there is another lizard here. We didn't see him here over here because he is hidden behind that piece of wood. <laughs> Another example. And it is a bit complicated to make these kind of images. I, I need real low energy, low energy X-rays to image this thin leaf of the flower. But on the other end, I need high energy X-rays to image my animal. So I have to play around with X-ray energies and X-ray intensities, and sometimes I have to block a part of the scene to get a hole in my, in my image. This is the only one I made with living animals. These snails are creeping around 
on my X-ray film during BMON. But the BMON time was short. They only received a dose of 35 microsieverts. That doesn't hurt them. <laughs> Here once more, I'd like to demonstrate the difference between the visible light and the X-rays. In the visible light, we see two total different beautiful birds. But when I X-ray them, there's hardly any difference left. And for that reason, the number of animals I can use in my images is restricted. <laughs> Once more, an example. I think in this image you really see nicely the anatomy of the eye of the frog. In this image, also, some snails are available. And when I made the image, I didn't realize that they were alive. Here are also two snails, but they moved during beam on, so there's unsharpness. This uh, composition I only made be because there is a, re a relation between the snake and the monitor lizard. Okay, you see also a lot of color, and I add color to my images uh, to bring back some of the surface. I try to combine the visible world with color and surface with the X-ray world, the inner. This also is one of my favorites. Uh, by the way, I have to tell that compositions, the natural scenes I, I build, I call them bioramas. And to conclude, I think this slide summarizes my journey. I started at the X-ray department in the hospital. Then I came along the X-ray images of purely flowers, of flowers and insects, to arrive of X-rays images of complete natural scenes, of bioramas. And this looking through X-ray glasses, looking with X-ray eyes, added yeah, a new dimension to my experience of nature. And of course, I thought about future. I thought about making X-ray movies of moving animals. <laughs> but that needs living animals. And yeah, in my opinion, it's not justified to expose living animals to the risk of X-rays. So forget about that issue. <laughs> I thought about 3D visualization of my X-ray images, and I'm working on it now. It's work in progress. But most of all, I should like to make X-ray images of, of large natural scenes with a lot of flowers and plants, and maybe even a couple of flamingos in it. <laughs> or let's say an alligator. <laughs> I think that should really be wonderful. But for this moment, I hope you enjoyed my X-ray images of today. Thank you. <laughs>